The super soldier serum transformed a skinny, frail Steve Rogers into the physical epitome of a human being. Captain America is as strong, as fast, and as tough as a person could possibly be. Unfortunately, a metamorphic treatment that changes the weakest of us to the very strongest is just something found in comic books and movies. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and I'm dissatisfied with my biology. My muscles are weak, my bones can be broken, and do you know how many naps it takes for me to get through a single day? What if there was a treatment that could give me super strength, unbreakable bones, and a body that never tired, never gave up, just like Captain America? Well, there is. Gene therapy is the addition, subtraction, or replacement of genes in a person's cells using a modified virus. The virus is altered so that it contains a specific genetic payload. Then it's injected in the person's body and it does what viruses do. It hijacks cells and rewrites their DNA. A normal virus rewrites a cell's DNA for the purpose of making that cell produce more of the virus. That's what a virus wants to do. In the case of gene therapy, it's rewriting DNA for different reasons. It's doing what the scientist wants it to do. Gene therapy was first used in 1990 to treat a four-year-old girl who was suffering from a rare immunodeficiency disorder. It was then used to cure people suffering from another immunodeficiency disorder, SCID, better known as boy in the bubble disease. Ever since then, scientists have been looking to gene therapy as a possible cure for other gene-based diseases, like cystic fibrosis, Parkinson's, cancer, and AIDS. They've also examined how gene therapy could be used to enhance otherwise healthy organisms. For a long time, geneticists were looking for genes they could turn on that would prove beneficial to humans. What they discovered was the answer wasn't turning on genes, but turning them off. All organisms, including human beings, evolved in a world of limited resources. In this environment, it wasn't always beneficial to be the biggest and the strongest because the biggest and the strongest need the most resources in order to survive. Those at the top of the food chain are always the first to be affected by a change in a resource's quantity or quality. In the 50s and 60s, when the U.S. was using the toxic pesticide DDT and it ran off into streams and rivers, it didn't impact the fish as much as it did the birds eating the fish because the birds had to eat multiple fish in order to survive, so they were exposed to more of the toxic chemical. For this reason, our bodies evolved genetic regulators, genes whose job it is to repress the expression of other genes. One of these regulators is the gene responsible for the production of myostatin. Myostatin is a protein that limits the number and growth of muscle fibers. Belgian blue cattle are an example of an animal that was naturally born without this gene. It has 40% greater muscle mass than an average cow. The first Belgian blues were the result of random mutation. Then farmers wishing to pass on these muscular attributes started breeding cattle that had similar characteristics. This led to a line of incredibly muscular cattle. In 1990, Sei Jin Lee, a researcher at Johns Hopkins University, discovered the genetic source of the Belgian blues muscle mass and artificially recreated this phenomenon in mice. By knocking out the myostatin gene, he created mice that had four times the muscle mass of an average mouse. But the big question within scientific circles still remains, why is Sei Jin Lee still so skinny? It's not just strength that's repressed by these regulators. Researchers at University of Pennsylvania discovered the gene that represses endurance. They found that by knocking out the gene IL-15R alpha, they were able to create mice that ran six times longer than an average mouse. And researchers at Yale have discovered the gene that inhibits increased bone density. An extended family in Connecticut has developed a mutation that stops the repression of the WNT signaling pathway, leading to increased bone formation. Richard Lifton of the Yale Department of Genetics describes the family's bones as resembling those of Bruce Willis's character in Unbreakable. He said they have extraordinarily dense bones and no history of breaks or fractures. Yale hasn't identified who this family is, probably because the family doesn't want people trying to steal their bones. So we know what genes to manipulate in order to create a super soldier, and we know how to do it. 
then what's stopping us? Well, manipulating the genes of an organism before it's begun to develop, as in the case of the genetically altered mice, is very different from manipulating the genes of a fully formed adult. And this science is still in its very early stages. Because of this, sending millions of viruses through your body to rewrite your genetic code could have some unintended consequences. If just a few viruses rewrite the wrong selection of DNA, you could be in a lot of trouble. So right now, we're not creating super soldiers because we've yet to perfect gene therapy, and applying it to human beings could be highly dangerous and ethically questionable. Or maybe we're not doing it because we're cowards. That's what I think. And that's why I created my own super soldier serum. It has adenoviruses, plasmids, a little bit of five-hour energy, and unlike the rest of the scientific community, I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to die.